What's the good word, y'all? What a day, what a day. Dalvin Cook, he's signing with the New York Jets, a one-year, $8.6 million contract. To be honest, I'm actually surprised. I really thought that uh, the New York Jets will walk away from this situation feeling comfortable with their running back backfield. That doesn't seem to be the case, and I don't want to phrase this as in this is necessarily a bad move. It's more of a necessary evil, right? Do everything you can to ensure that the, there's no excuses for why we fail if we don't make the playoffs, if we can't reach a Super Bowl and try to actually get ourselves uh, some rings and a trophy. A lot of what we've heard from a negative perspective about Dalvin Cook is from the analytical side of things. Uh, Efficiency-wise, he's not been at his best, right? I think he's had one of the worst expected, uh, I, I forget what the rating terminology is, but basically expected rushing yards over average, something to that effect. Um, he hasn't done anything close to what he's done. And with that said, he's still cleared, um, you know, 1,200 yards. He's still exceeded uh, five touchdowns, et cetera. He's still contributing quite a lot in the, in the receiving game as well. So what this ultimately means is the New York Jets not only improve their RB2 position, but you essentially have increased your chances of seeing a more productive player out of guys like Michael Carter, Bam Knight. Um, and now you make a hard decision on who do you think you can get away with cutting in that running back room. Obviously, Brees Hall will return as RB1 in some capacity, right? It may be a, a, a 1A and 1B type situation between him and Cook. Um, but now you put less pressure on having a guy like Michael Carter, if you choose to to roll the dice with him, if you only carry three, um, or a Bam Knight uh, to have to produce, um, you know, you know, in a in a situation that's probably not favorable for them, right? Uh, an offensive line is going to take some time to have to work itself uh, into top notch order with Dwayne Brown being out, Mackay Becton kind of being on the men. You're not really being a hundred percent confident, maybe yet, in Max Mitchell there with uh, you know some of the rumors out there that maybe uh, Billy Turner could win a right tackle job. So there's a lot of moving pieces, um, but yeah, I mean, I guess. Addition is addition here, right? This seems like uh, the easiest move that the New York Jets could have made this late in the game. I don't love the contract number by any means, and I'm surprised. Uh, this feels like one of those rare situations where Joe Douglas has caved uh, for the value of his contract. And I wish I knew the number that Ezekiel Elliott signed for off the top of my head to the Patriots. Uh, but would you, when you look in the grand scheme of things this year, I think the New York Jets probably by a good two to three million margin uh, has uh, we probably set the market for the running backs this year. Granted, it's just a one year contract. I don't know the guarantees and all of that, but uh, we've definitely overpaid quite a bit here just in terms of the general market share for how running backs have done. But I'm pumped. We're bringing in a guy that's going to allow Brees Hall to uh, keep fresh legs as much as possible. Um, we're going to put MC uh, or Bam Knight or maybe Israel Bandikanda in a much better situation uh, where they can uh, learn the nuances of the game from a veteran. Um who's done exceptionally well in the West Coast system um, and, and not have to feel like they need to be the most productive player in the running back room. So I do have some questions about how this will play out from a chemistry standpoint. We've seen uh, that Brees Hall didn't love uh, the idea of bringing in Ezekiel Elliott before when those rumors were surfaced. Um, we know Michael Carter is going to be the good soldier that, you know, tries to smooth everything over. But uh, I feel like there's going to be a little bit of friction here. So We'll see how it all ultimately pans out, um, especially with some of the comments and the rumors that we heard about his trainers saying, you know, Dalvin Cook didn't necessarily walk away from the training loving things. Uh, I can't remember exactly what the tweet was, but, but basically that New York Jets fans would hate Dalvin Cook if they knew what he was saying about the Jets. Um, and this was after he had came and spent a weekend with the team, seen us practice and everything. So there's going to be a few things the media is going to try to run with, uh, I'm sure, for this situation. But uh let me know what your guys' thoughts are. We're bringing in a thousand plus yard veteran rusher here in Dalvin Cook. Familiarity with the, the West Coast scheme already and how things like to get done on a productive team that's been able to balance some elite passing weapons with a strong rushing attack. So uh, we'll see how things work in our favor. But again, let me know your thoughts and I'll catch you guys again. Peace.